tonight we have two amazing guests. Yes, Frank and Belinda Gambuza. Now, I met Frank many times over the course of the past um, few years, but I have never literally met Belinda other than Facebook and um, some conversation on Facebook. And I just had the pleasure to meet her the other day. We did a dry run. And let me tell you, the energy that comes from when they're together as a couple was amazing because uh, it was, it, it's so in, inspiring. You know, everybody probably knows who is Frank and Belinda. Together, they, they've been married for over 30 years. Um, you know, they run, they, they started a salon, Salon Visage, as you know, uh, at, I think it was like 19, I don't know, you tell me when, was it 1986? And then grew that salon with over 170 employees into three businesses and, and went through tough times, um, great times, ups and downs, but no matter what, they are the ultimate couple that can speak about mental toughness. And you're going to learn a lot about it today. So any kind of questions that you guys have, please drop it in the chat today. Because for me, to learn from these two about how to run an excellent communication in your company or just in generally cannot be more than inspiring. It's literally the thing to learn from. Okay, so uh, join me with Frank and join me with Belinda right now. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi, Ronit. How are you guys? Are we are fantastic. Okay, so that back one looks so good. And I hope, <laughs> and I hope the chair is, is, is good. What's going on? It, it, it's, it's better than the other. <laughs> well you know but, but just behind the scene we just got shared a little bit love uh between my husband came and my husband really doesn't want to be on the show ever because he's so embarrassed you know just to be have to face on the show but um it was just a funny thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah especially when i went crashing to the floor with my chair <laughs> It was like suddenly Belinda was just like I was up and then I was down. <laughs> I'm like, where did you go? <laughs> where did you go? <laughs> so last last week we had Candy Shaw here, and we were just talking with Candy, uh, and she says, "Oh my God, I'm just gonna text him nonstop during the show." I'm like, "No, Candy, don't do that." <laughs> that sounds like Candy. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so, but last week we talked about how awesome it is to be on Zoom. Because we we have our tops and our tops look really good and nobody really knows what's on the bottom. Who's right. A, who says there's anything on the bottom? Well, let me just think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can have our little bikini speedo, Frank. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out what it looks like. So just for you, I'm having a glass of wine. And I know, I know, I know we talked about whiskey, but yeah. See, oh, but, you're, double, you're double fisting, are you? We, Ronette, we have our little uh, our I, wine glasses that are logoed. Logoed. Shameless. Gambuzas, shamelessly and advertising. Yes. Ah. <laughs> she, she's, she's plugging. Yeah. She's plugging the salon right on my shelf. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get an invoice for that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna let Frank Frank Falter know about this. <laughs> so cheers to us. Salud. So, cheers Salud. to us. Lechaim. Lechaim. Yes. You know, I, I have to tell you, this silicone glass is so amazing. It's just yeah. so light. And you know, when you're traveling, you just don't want anything that is glass because man, let me tell you how many times I found my bed on the other side. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so, um, yeah, so welcome to the show. I'm super excited that you're here. I, I have to say, I, I, I've been envisioning what am I going to talk to Frank? Uh, because, you know, I, I mean, of course, we're going to talk about how to be successful and how to fail and how to fall on your face and how to raise up again and all things. But when we talked last time about being married after, for 33 years, I said, Frank, 
you know, you know that, uh, and I think I, I spoke to Leon about it too. I said, I love that because I remember Belinda said something like, you know, it's not about the men, the woman behind the man. It's never about that. It's about the woman beside her man. Oh, exactly. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's Belinda Cord. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. That's a good one. But 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 the woman I have, I have to catch up to us. She's um, she's always <laughs> yes. so fast that it's one step ahead. So okay. it's uh, it's well. It's, that's the beauty about being together. When I'm ahead, I can pull him along, and when he's ahead, he can pull me along, and we um get there together. Mm, I love that. I love that. Uh, it, it just makes me think about, you know, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes you look backwards and you say thirty three years. No, it hasn't been that long. I mean has it you know it's for me i feel like we've been married 10 years it, i mean max it, it's it's flown by so much we've done so much and we've been through so much and um it it's extraordinary when you think about the years and how fast they do go everybody says that but it is for sure the only time i ever remember uh, time going slow is when I was waiting on my driver's license. <laughs> right. uh -oh. and that was about it. <laughs> uh -oh. Old enough to drink legally, right? Yeah. Oh. oh, that's so funny. I don't think there even was a legal age at that time. We can yeah. drink whenever we want to. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did you guys meet? Like, how did that happen? I mean, you're in New York. I know you were in New York, or, you know, or New Jersey, and and you're in Tennessee at that time. Am I right? Yeah, I moved. No, I moved. I was already living in Tennessee. When, when okay. We, yeah. Yeah. We, we, I was, uh, I had started a small salon called Salon Visage. Yes. And Belinda was working for the big salon here in town. It was uh, kind of the one that everybody aspired to be like. We, you know, I talk about it. It was a big uh, uh, grocery store and we were a little kind of 7 Eleven over in the corner. <laughs> you know? So, and, and she was a top colorist there, top headdresser at the time. Uh, but we met at the Knoxville airport, both going to New York city to the international beauty show. So the IBS is kind of, uh, very, very special to us because it was 35 years ago at this point. Yeah. yeah. Because we're together 34 and the one year prior. So wow. we, we were both going to New York and, uh, it, it gets more coincidental as it goes on. It's a very long story, but, uh, it, it should, it should, <laughs> be, it should be a, a movie or a book, but it's a wonderful story. And, uh, here we are today still together. Yeah, and we always try to go back to the IBS to um, celebrate us because that is where we met. Oh, I love that. And so when you met, guys, was that like, this is it. I, I found the, soul, the, the soulmate of my life, the love of my life, and and that's it? That was it for me, absolutely. And it, I can't speak for Belinda, but I was ready to get married like next Saturday. No way. I knew, I knew just like this. Yeah, he wow. pretty much was. <laughs> um, but for me, I was like, oh my gosh, I am going to marry this man and there's nothing I can do about it. That's what I said to myself. I felt very vulnerable. And I really don't think that vulnerability is a bad place to be, but I felt very vulnerable because there, my emotions, the love that was viewing out from the very beginning. I just, I just couldn't imagine. I'd always heard of this in uh, fables and stories and beautiful in movies, yeah. Love stories. yeah. <laughs> but it then happened. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this really does happen. But the vulnerability came when I said the instant I met him that night, I said, I am going to marry this man. Wow. And it doesn't, there's no stopping it. I just knew it. Like we, I just we knew even it. tried a few times. It was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So so you know, thinking about I, and I, I understand. I think I can relate to that uh, as well. I mean, it's been 33 years, so sometimes I don't really remember that much. But um, but I'm thinking about uh, being in love versus loving. Being in love as a couple is that is that something that when you guys were together, would you say that if that is the core of a successful marriage is to to really marry from love versus 
how do you know when when you love or or in love you know all that speaking mm-hmm. about that you know you just how do you know that this is it or this I, is not it I think there's just so many different types of love and i think yes that our particular love was a passionate love from the very beginning but my mom and dad told me a story about them when they got married and they were married for i don't know 50 years or something they're both passed away now and um but they went through hard times my mother was very good friends with my father and uh she was not having a good marriage with her husband um and he was abusive and then she got pregnant and she was like, I cannot go through staying married to him, even though I'm pregnant. And back in that day, which was like, I don't know, what was it? The forties or something it was way back. Yeah, um, sure. She, um, my father said, let me marry you because you can't go through and be um, pregnant and have a baby. And during that time, that was just not allowed and it was unheard of. And so he married her and he was totally in love with her, but she wasn't quite in love with him. Okay. Very good friends with him. But as the years went on, she probably became just as much in love with him, if not more. And it, and it's a beautiful love that grew. So oh. it, it's love comes in many, many different ways. We have our own thumbprint on our relationships. Mm. I mean, I know uh, friends will say, well, my ex-husband acts totally different now with his current wife, da, da, da. And I just want to say, it's because they have a whole new thumbprint. It can't ever, you can't repeat what you guys had, whatever that is, you know? Yeah. extraordinary I think about love is is every relationship is so entirely different and ours comes with you know not only do we love each other but we love what we do together okay so that's where I was going to ask you next it's like you know it takes it takes um, a long time I think to find who you are within the relationship Um, Right. It, it's like to identify your role. I mean, if you think about it, you know, a few years back when you started this relationship, it's exciting and it's all great. And there's so many new things that are happening up. And then, boom, you make a decision. Let's open a salon together. Mm-hmm. And then it's like a third marriage. It's like it's, it's another person that is coming into your life. Right. It's for like, sure. For sure. Or, 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 or a child. It's for that, sure. <laughs> like a, <laughs> child. <laughs> a child with many children. So, um, you know, that affects. So, so how many years were you into your marriage before you opened your, um, your, your second location or your bigger location? So we were working together before we got married. Okay. So okay. that that's a whole nother set of dynamics. Dynamics. Yes. Right? Is, is we're working together, uh, Belinda came from a very large salon that did a high volume. I was more of a boutique salon that was looking at things differently. So we had all that to deal with at first. Uh, And, you know, the thing is we're both A plus personalities. So when it's good, it is absolutely phenomenal. When it's not, it it could be extremely challenging. (laughs) (laughs) And that's saying it politely. (laughs) But uh, yeah, you know, I think the same strength that you have as a couple to run a business is also can be the same weakness that you have. So you have to get that figured out on, on how to, you know, when to hold them and when to fold them. I mean, it's, there's no doubt that's in a relationship period. And then when you mix that with the business relationship, and then when you mix that with Belinda does hair color and I do haircuts, and then you mix that with her background versus my, it, it was a lot. It was an absolute lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the thing, it was worth fighting for. And the thing is, you just know you, if you're committed, you find a way. Yeah. Are you committed to love? And when you're committed to love, 
you know, you find you find your way totally. Um, so now you're you're operating uh, together in a salon, and uh, you decide to take on even more so as a couple, a larger salon, or uh, decide yourself. You know what? We need to add more because it's not enough to have a big salon and a marriage and children, but you need to have one more. So, what happens? How does that change the dynamic now? Because they say they say that when you open a second location, you're 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 moving yourself not into the same salon. It's a completely different dynamic. It's a different personas over there, right? So now you have to. It's almost like running two businesses that are totally different in the same time. Am I right about that? Yes. Well, that's absolutely right. But even prior to that. I don't think Belinda was there a month before she said we we had to change where we were. I was ve I'm, first of all, we're directly opposite when it comes to one being a gambler and one being extremely conservative. Yeah, I, I, am, I can roll the dice. <laughs> and I'm like, why go into a casino? Let's go buy a beautiful pair of shoes and not waste our money on something that. You, so it's uh, you know we're uh. in a small salon with a low overhead. I'd still be in that place if it wasn't for her. Uh, yeah. The rent was four hundred thousand a month, so yeah, we could do that in the first three hours we were open back then and with twenty-five dollar <laughs> haircut. So it was very safe. So Belinda made it clear coming out of a beautiful large salon that we had to change locations. Uh, so that that was the first move. Well, and the thing is, um, Frank's uh, incredible way and his love for the foundation of education in haircutting and hair color is absolutely incredible and has always been. My vision for growing and getting bigger was in itself incredible because the two coming together, his love for foundation and my love for seeing things um, in a bigger way and a bigger vision was really just a perfect combination for us to grow our business. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, so he, he, he would always say, he would tell me like, no, no, this is beautiful. This is great. Okay. We're not, we were, when I came to a salon, the first time I came to his salon, when we were dating, he um, painted this beautiful picture. Oh my God. It was so it's just a cute, quaint little place. It's so adorable. <laughs> and it's so sweet and so fun and this, that, and the other. I didn't paint and a picture, but I, so, I, I got it. I painted a picture. I don't know if you, you know, Frank can uh, put icing on anything and make anything look amazing, taste amazing, beautiful, <laughs> extraordinary. That's just Frank's gift. He's got an incredible gift in that sense. And 98% of the time, he's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> That's my I'll, I'll take it. it. But, but I, so I go to visit this small little salon that he's talked about, like it's a um, little piece of paradise. And I walk in and I'm like, What is it? Is this, is this your salon? And he goes, Yes, yes, come, let me show it to you. And he's all excited and he's still in the salesperson mode and blah, blah, blah. I walk back and they have metal folding chairs, four chairs. And you know what? Guess what? You got to start somewhere. And they, I get that. They were paid for. But were, no debt. I literally came <laughs> out of a salon where these two Germans from uh, the Houston area wanted to move to Knoxville and build this incredible salon. That's And it was magnificent. We had 100 employees, and it was back in the 80s, and it was just magnificent. Yeah, they did the Un best unheard, of. unheard of that back in the 80s, you have a hundred yes. employees because everything was small. It was, exactly. It was the best of the best. Everything was top notch. So that's what I was used to. And I didn't want to make him think that I felt like I was too good, but I was kind of too good for what he had. <laughs> She didn't want to say one mouth, but I didn't want to say it, a, but I was like, her face oh. said it all. Okay. But 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 I did understand where what his thought process was, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful yeah. what he was doing there. And honestly, 
he was making such a huge mark in Knoxville in this small little, yeah, small little salon. And um, because the hair that was coming out of there was magnificent. It was on point. It was on trend. We were all going like, we let's lean into this because this is like unbelievable. Who is this guy? And I, we want to know what he's doing. Now, just, just so I can, yeah, just so I can clarify to everybody who's listening. So at that time, Frank, that's not a your your high end barbershop. This is a salon that uh, takes everybody tiny. in. Tiny salon. Tiny, like like six <laughs> foot, like like a thousand. Yeah, like feet. six. There were like five or six employees. Yeah, it was in an old older house that they converted. Now you can get the picture. They converted into a salon. Yeah, the sun room was the shampoo room. <laughs> the front room, the the entrance, um, you know, where the you check in room. was a living room. Uh, one bedroom was the color area. One bedroom was the cutting area, and the other bedroom was Frank's room. You know, it was it was a, it really was adorable. It yeah. was adorable. Well, the thing is, Ron, to, to you know, from a kind of understanding from a, an investment standpoint. I, I had no money. Nobody's drinking. I'm the only one drinking, just by the way. I'm drinking, so she. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bill, Bill just had it uh, to top it off a little bit more, just so you know. We're drinking. <laughs> Good deal. So the thing is, I had no money to open. I just had a dream. So the most I was able to borrow based on a co-signer was uh, $7,000 from the bank. Yeah. It was it was 29% interest. Yeah, oh, I, I remember that story. I listened to that story and I'm thinking, yeah. of, holy moly. But, but the, the takeaway to any listener right now is, you know, if you wait for the perfect time to try to fulfill your dream, you you, you may die before you, you get there. You know, it's, yeah. or you may be too old to the point where you say, you know, I've lost a passion piece. You know, I was with a salon owner in Australia and this was an older, successful salon. I've been to Australia a few times doing seminars. And the man took me out to dinner. And he said, you know, I always believed you need three things to be a successful salon. He said, uh, you need money. You need finances. Uh, you need uh, experience. Right. And you need passion. Mm -hmm. And I had two of the three. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, you're undercapitalized getting in anyway. Right. So, right. But you made it work. You made it work with, with, with two ingredients and not all of the ingredients. Right. So now you're thinking, okay, this, this girl wants me to open a big salon. She wants me to expand. And you, you're getting out of your comfort zone because this is not what you want. Okay. So there's got to be some sort of dynamic conversation between the two of you. Well, I'm scared. I don't want to do it. Yes, we're going to do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, right? here's what I told them. First of all, I highly believe, you know, we, we all hear about your thoughts are your reality. Your thoughts are your reality. We've heard it. And it's like a big thing right now. Honestly, as you were speaking, it's not your thoughts that are your reality. It's your action. That's a reality. You got to take action on anything you want. And if it's, if it's mixed with passion, passion is going to work. Um, so I, what I told them was I said, Frank, you know, you deliver a beautiful product. These clients absolutely love you, but it doesn't, your hair and what you're producing here is not matching up with your environment. The facility was not. We have got to right. change this facility to bring it up to the incredible integrity, the incredible um, uh, hair that's being done here and match it with the building. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. when I said that, he the goes, brand, oh, the, brand, the brand did not match yet the vision. Right. Right. That's it, exactly. So now so now you're thinking, so now you're moving and how did you guys find your next location? And why did you move out of the town? Because you moved out of the we town. Out of town. No, no, we moved, we moved to another part of town, same the, town. Okay. Okay. Not, not far away. It was also the same area of town. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah same section. But uh, what, were you getting a facial or something? Was it you or me or somebody was getting their skin done with David? Back I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Belinda was getting a facial. A at, friend of ours. At a boutique facial place. And I think Belinda mentioned, once she gets something in her head, I might as well just move over and wait for. <laughs> oh, like you're not that way too. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wait. I, I wait months, and you all only want to wait seconds, maybe a minute, but never more than that. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, yeah, I, 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 and I totally can relate to that. Okay, I can carry. Yeah, like if I have something on my head, we're getting it done. If Bill has something on his head, and I know he's stubborn about it, I'm like, I'm backing up. All right, we'll go that way. It has to be. Yeah. It has to be that way. around their mind and stuff. I mean, good God, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. So no, so she was telling the the skincare specialist. And he said, listen, there's a place down the road that would be perfect. Now, I'm thinking he's just wanting to get us closer to him because we don't do facials. We got a big female clientele, the wealthy of town. You know, I'm thinking there's a little agenda here with this guy. <laughs> so, but we go down there and it was the perfect fit of, of what we needed to move into. Mm -hmm. So she said, okay, we have it. I said, yeah, but we don't have the money. So she said, we'll find it. And we found it. And, uh, you know, which it, I, I, again, if if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Well, it, 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 and 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 just to what Belinda said, it all starts with the thoughts. It starts with the thinking, and that becomes an action. You but know, you think that's, about it for the rest of your life, and and, and nothing gets done. Nothing it's gets all done. about action. Yeah, we we knew it. We knew a guy that Gail Gail Davis. We knew a guy. Big that, dreams. Big dreams. Phenomenal big hairdresser Such here in town. Such a great guy. Great guy, handsome, talented. We would have dinner with him like every month or so, you know, kind of trying to recruit him, but kind of, but not. It was a relationship that Belinda had from yeah. working. At, yeah. And this guy, every time we went to dinner with him, he had great ideas, but he never acted on them. I mean, for 20 years, he's big, had big dreams, great ideas. And the only thing holding him back was him mm. because chances were if he acted on this and for the listeners here, I mean, you know, as long as you're not gambling your family's safety or financial ruin, it, you you got to chase your dream. I mean, you yeah, have, to. have to chase your dream. You, you know, because at the end of the day, it's, you know, why are we here? Right? We, well, those 33 years go by real quick. So no doubt. Yeah. yeah. So chasing your dreams. So chasing your dreams. So your dreams became to be a mutual dream. The two of you now had. The two, the two different dreams became to be one. Yes. For sure. and, and now you're, you're decided, okay, we're going all in on this. And now you're in a new space, a bigger space. How, how is that um, going for you guys? Two years down, it's, you know, you know how it is you're in a new place you get momentum, you got a new clients. It's all exciting. Okay. Now what, how's the next move? What was the next move? Well, we, were so um, elated with our new place. The hair, the everything just went then to the next level. Because I think you really do have to put it all together. And so now we've got this better environment. It's amazing. We have room, we outgrew that little, little house. And then we really get on the map. Now we're really being talked about. And like, this is the place and Knoxville has supported us all these years amazingly. And they still do. And we are so blessed in this community. But when we hit that store, that's when we took off like a rocket. Mm -hmm. and hairdressers were coming to want to work for us. Um, we had uh, clients coming in. I heard about this place, da, da, da. Uh, the new studios were wanting to do interview after interview after interview. It was really um, the talk of the town for a long time. And it still is. I'm not saying that it's still, it's not, but it was because it was new. And, it, and this guy from New York, he's really from New Jersey, but they'd always say New York. New York yes. he, never said, he never said New York. New they Jersey, said New York. Yeah. He's proud of New Jersey, by the way. <laughs> so proud. And um, you make that sound odd. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I guess we I guess all know. We all know. know. Jersey, honestly, there and New York. A, yeah. Honestly, there was a man one time said, "Frank, you're not you're you're not really um, uh, you don't honor your roots. You always say you're from New York, uh, and we know you're from New Jersey." And I said, what are you talking about? I've never said New York. And then, of course, I got—I was like, "What?" I, I then I, I 
I just got mad for you. She and scratches said, eyeballs out and it was game over. And I said, excuse me, <laughs> sir, are you misunderstanding when it was done? done. Oh, no, there's a reason. Though, yeah, right? he's really, because Frank is from West New York, New Jersey. Right. That's oh, the and the guy totally misunderstood it. Uh, so, oh, Frank is, Frank loves his roots. I mean, this, this small little state, everywhere we go in the world, we meet somebody that he went to high school with, knows um, from that. And West New York, New Jersey is one mile radius with how many people? Million? 50,000. No, no, 50,000, which is the second. Like a million. <laughs> it's, Sorry. It's, the, it's the second most populated county in America. Yeah. Well, I totally, I totally get it because my first trip to United States from Israel was when I was 15 years old and I was a guest with my friends who just moved with her parents to Manalapan, New Jersey. Oh yeah, I know Manalapan. Of course you do. Uh, so here you know. I am, 15 years old, uh, you know, living in Israel. And in Israel, all you know about America is all the movies. You know, everything is yeah. wonderful. Everything is huge. Everything. So I'm two weeks with my friend in Manalapan and it was right around Easter time. And so every day I go to school with her, right? So I'm going to school with her to in Manalapan and all I can think about myself, oh my God. What a life. I have to come here one of these days. Little did I know that one, you know, I will end up here, but it was it was yeah. my first introduction. Yeah. Jersey will do that to you. It, it did. It felt like it felt like home. It really did felt like home. It's very close. Everybody knows about everybody. You know, it's a big story. You know, it's a big open book. It's an open book. Multi it is an open book, and everybody knows what exit they live on. Yeah. Yeah. 